In our last video segment, we showed you how to connect an access point directly to the wave blade. Uh, we were connecting, remember, port A to port A and port B to port B. Uh, that was for the situation where we have things on a uh, tabletop. Many access points that um, have very strong RF enclosures themselves can be operated on a tabletop uh, without going into an RF enclosure. However, if you're in a lab situation where you have many access points near one another or a lot of energy in the room, many customers prefer to then put their access points into RF enclosures. And we're going to go through the steps that it takes to now put this access point inside the RF enclosure. So really what we're doing is making the exact same connections, port A and port B of our wave blade, to port A and port B on our access point, except when we're done, we're going to have the access point inside an RF enclosure here. So you can see that we have a, a fairly straightforward RF en enclosure. Um, I've already connected cables to the bulkheads inside. We're going to show you what that looks like from the back side now. The RF enclosure is nothing more than a metal box that shields RF energy. On the back side of an RF enclosure, there will be a filtered interface panel, which will have uh, electrical interfaces for gigabit ethernet, for DB9 if you need a console port connection, and for DC power. These are not recommended for alternating current, but for DC power. Most access points of an enterprise class get their power from power over ethernet or PoE and these connectors do support PoE so powering the ethernet is just a matter of plugging it, its switch into one of these ethernet ports then making the connection inside the enclosure. From the RF point of view we have several different configurations. This particular one has eight SMA bulkheads. These are not filtered. They simply allow the connection of a cable to the outside and then you'll make a cable connection that matches exactly on the inside. You'll notice that typically there are terminators over all unused SMA connections. That's a good idea. That helps keep RF energy out of the enclosure. So since we're using a two spatial stream access point, and we're really only needing to connect to port A and port B in order to get full performance out of this access point, I'm going to remove terminators from only two of the um, SMA connectors and now I just need to remember which one I connect to which port on the on the wave blade. So here what we'll do is we'll take port A and we'll connect it to the lower of the two SMAs and again with RF cables you just want them to be tight and you want them to have no kinks you want the the bends to be gentle and just well managed no no tight curves and no stress on the cable. That keeps them working for a long period of time. So now we've got the wave blade connected through RF cables to the back of the, of the um, RF enclosure. And what the last connection we'll make here at the outside of the RF, connect, RF enclosure is we're going to connect an Ethernet cable up. This would then go connect to the switch um, or, or um, if this access point didn't need a switch, we would then connect directly to our wave blade, the Ethernet wave blade. Now we can have traffic moving from the Ethernet port of the wave blade into the filter. It'll go to the access point, and then as RF energy is created by the access point, comes back to our wave blade and vice versa. So now we're going to turn around and look at the front side of the RF enclosure. And all we're really doing here is is positioning things that we can put the access point inside this enclosure in such a way that we don't do any damage to the cable. So remembering that we want smooth uh, bends on our cables, we'll connect our RF cables, which are just connected at the bulkheads in the back that match um, the connections that we previously made. These will be connected and tightened down. Again, if you've got your torque wrench, that would be a good idea. If not, you can tighten them by, by finger tight very well. And the, the Ethernet connection, of course, to the access point needs to be made that matches the Ethernet connection that we made on the back panel. Make sure that they click all the way in. Now your job is to gently place the access point inside the enclosure in such a way where you're just making sure that the cables don't kink and they have gentle bends, right? So now we've got everything inside the access point. We don't want any cables to close in the seal. And when we close the door, 
then we've got uh, plenty of RF isolation between this access point and anything else in the lab, and we're, we're able to make our measurements.